So in this video, we will learn how to automatically sync Google Sheets with Google Calendar in few minutes. So basically, we are going to start with a small example. So as you can see, this is my Google Sheet and it has been titled Google Sheets to Google Events. So basically, the idea is that we make some entry here and it will be reflected as an event in Google Calendar. So let me just show you. So I'm going to make a title by Gold. Okay, so this is the title by Gold. And the description is Gold is all time low. And uh, the idea is that I want to uh, go long on gold from 13th or let's say 16th of May 2021 to uh, let's say 19th of May 2021. Basically, I will be going on hold for gold for uh, three days from 16th of May 2021 to 19th of May 2021. And the assignee is basically this guy. Let's say his name is uh, Baron Buffet. Okay, one, two, three at the rate gmail.com. Okay, so basically we have uh, entered the title by gold. And this is the description. Gold is all time low. And this is the start date, this is the end date, and this is the assignee. So basically the gist is uh, our event will be created in Google Calendar. So let me just uh, straight away take you to Google Calendar. So this is my Google Calendar and uh, the event has been scheduled for May. So this is May and uh, the scheduled event is from 16th to 19th. So let's have a look on 16th. Do we have the date of gold? Yes, buy gold. And uh, as you can see, we have uh, the assignee that is Warren Buffett and the description gold is gold is all time low. So this event will continue up to 19th. So basically on 17th also we will have this event. 18th also we will have this event and also on 19th we will have this event. But after 19th we won't have this event that is by gold. Okay. So basically this is the gist. You have uh, basically entered some details in Google Sheets and you have an event in Google Calendar. So your obvious question is how did I do it? How did I manage to create an event in Google Calendar from the data present in Google Sheet? So basically, I have used an integration and automation software called as Public Connect that has integrated Google Sheets and Google Calendar. Now the best part of using Public Connect is there is no need for coding skills or programming knowledge. Let me show you. So in the new tab, let me just type Pabli.com. So your obvious question is why Pabli.com? Well, we have an app called as Public Connect that will integrate Google Sheets to Google Calendar. So this is the website of Pabli.com. Click on sign in. So your obvious question is why are we working in incognito mode? Well, the answer is very simple. The integration of Google Sheets with Public Connect involves, if it involves multiple Gmail accounts, there will be always the problem of authentication issues. So if you're someone who has multiple Gmail accounts and you're working to integrate Google Sheets to any other app, it's always advisable that you work in incognito mode. Otherwise, there will be problem of authentication. So this is the dashboard of Public Connect. Let me just uh, scroll down and here you will find Connect. Just click on Access now. Okay, so basically at the top right corner, you will find a button, Create Workflow. Now before I create a new workflow, there is something I have to do. So as you can see, I have already integrated Google Sheets to Google Calendar Events 1. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to uh, switch off this workflow. The reason I'm switching off this workflow is if I don't switch off this workflow and I create a new workflow, there will be the problem of duplication of results. For example, if we enter some data in Google Sheet, there will be two events because there are two workflows running. Okay, so that is why I have switched off this workflow. It is actually none of your concern because we are going to start from scratch by clicking on create workflow. Okay, so we are going to give a name to this workflow. So how about I give it as Google Sheets data to Google Calendar events and let me just click on create of course you can give any name according to your discretion it's totally up to you now uh, as you can see a window called as trigger window has appeared in front of you now basically we want to uh, get all the details from our Google Sheet so that is why I'm going to choose the app as Google Sheet Google Sheet it is Now in the trigger event, how about we make it as new spreadsheet row? Okay, so new spreadsheet row is a trigger event. 
So your obvious question is what is a trigger event? Trigger is basically a if statement. It asks a question if this condition is met, what should be done? For example, if a new spreadsheet row is added in Google Sheet, then what action should be taken by the system? Now at present we only have one trigger event. Now in case if you want more trigger events, approach the help section and go to public forums from there. And here you can make a request that you want so and so trigger events. Okay, so basically the gist is we are just trying to integrate Google Sheets to public Connect. So let me just straight away take it to Google Sheet. So this is my Google Sheet. It has been titled Event Creation in Google Calendar, a newly created Google Sheet. So as you can see, we have uh, the columns that is title, description, start date, end date and the assignee. Basically the same details we had in our earlier Google Sheet. So we are going to integrate this Google Sheet to public Connect. So first of all, just click on add-ons. So when you click on add-ons, you will find public Connect webhooks in the drop down. So uh, in your case, public Connect webhooks might not have been installed yet. So all you have to do is just click on get add-ons. Okay, so basically when you click on click on get add-ons, Google Workspace Marketplace opens up in front of you. So basically in the search, just type public Connect webhooks. Public Connect webhooks. Okay, so as you can see, it is already installed in my system. All you have to do is just click on this button and public Connect webhooks will be installed in your system also. Now there is something you have to know. After installing public Connect webhooks, do not forget to refresh your Google Sheet. I repeat again, after installing public Connect webhooks, do not forget to refresh your Google Sheet. So let me just cancel this. Going back to add-ons, clicking on public Connect webhooks, just let me click on initial setup. Okay, so before we discuss about initial setup, there is something I have to tell you. I actually forgot. So as you can see, the last data entry column is column E. Okay, so as you can see, the last data entry column is column E. Okay, this might come in handy. That is why I'm mentioning it. Okay, so let me just go back to initial setup. So this is the window of initial setup and we have two fields, the webhook URL as well as the trigger column. Okay, so let's describe the webhook URL first. So, so this is basically my webhook URL. I have copied it and I'm going to paste it here. Okay, so we have entered it. Now coming to the trigger column. The trigger column is always the last data entry column. I repeat this again. The trigger column is always the last data entry column. In our case, the last data entry column is column E. So I have mentioning it column E. Let me just click on submit. Okay, there is something else you have to do. Go back to add-ons, clicking on public connect webhooks and just click on send on event. So this will ensure that anytime the column E is filled, doesn't matter which row it is, it will keep sending on the data. Now since Public Connect is integrated with this Google Sheet, let's check whether it is capable of capturing this data. Yes, so this rotating disk basically means that uh, it is uh, going to capture the data when we have entered the trigger column. Okay, so let's make some entry. So basically we are going to conduct some experiment now. So the title is by Silver. And the description is um, silver is used for electronics. Okay, so we have to mention the start date. So I'm mentioning the start date from that is 16th of May, 16th of May 2021. And the end date I'm mentioning is uh, 29th, 29th of May 2021. And the assignee is basically, okay, Bill Gates, Bill Gates, 789, at the rate gmail.com. Okay, so we have set the assignee. So basically, the trigger column has been filled. So let's uh, have a look whether Republic Connect has captured this detail or not. Okay, so it is showing waiting for the data. Yes, the data has been captured. So the title is by silver and then we have the description silver is used for electronics. Similarly, we have the start date. Okay, that is 16th of May 2021 and this is the end date 29th of May 2021. Excellent. So using all these details and as well as the assignee, we are going to create an event in Google Calendar. So let's introduce one more window. So this window is called as the action window. So now in the choose app, how about make it as Google Calendar. Google Calendar it is. Now in the action event, how about we make it as create an event. Okay, so let me just click on connect. In the new connection name, let me just click on connect with Google Calendar. Okay, so there is only one account, so I'm selecting this one. And uh, let me just uh, confirm my choice. So before I click on allow, let me just tell you something. Public Connect doesn't take any chances with your data. Your data is 100% safe and secure with us. So on the basis of that trust, let me just press allow. 
okay so the authorization is successful just press okay so there is something i have to show before we create an event i am going to show you something so as you can see we have the start date as well as the end date okay so these are the two fields that you have to fill at any cost because these two fields are required unless without them you can really create an event now uh, it is demanding a particular format so as you can see this is the format okay so basically you have the year the month and the day and after that you have the time okay similarly for the end date you have the year month day time okay so basically it's known as the utc format and the unique thing about this UTC format is that it has a letter T in between it. So basically you want this format to be inputted here. So what I'm going to do here is, uh, there is something you should know. <laughs> Actually, this uh, is not in UTC format. The start date or the end date is not in UTC format. So first of all, we are going to convert each of them into UTC format. It's actually pretty easy. So first of all, I'm going to convert the start date. So this is how you do it. You introduce one more action window. And in the choose app, how about we make it as date time formatter? Because we actually want to format the date. Now in the action event, how about we just make it as format date only? Then click on connect. Okay, so we have to map the date. So this is my date. So this is something that will come from the first accordion and we have mapped it. Easy. Okay, now we want to convert into the UTC format. So as I mentioned, the one way to recognize the UTC format is just type the letter T. Okay, so as you can see, this is the format that we want. So as you can see, it has the letter T. We have selected it. Now, from format is already this. This is the format that is day, month and year. I'm just going to copy this and I'm going to paste it here. Okay, so the from format is ready. Let me just click on save and send test request. Okay, so as you can see, the UTC format for the start date is ready. That is 16th of May 2021. And uh, again, we are going to introduce one more window. So this time we are going to format the due date. So format date time formatter. Okay, this one. Now in the action event, how about we make it as format date only. Then let me just click on connect. So first of all, we have to mention the date. So this is the date. Okay, so this is the end date. We have mapped it. And then we have the time. So let me just type T and we have the UTC format easy and uh, as i mentioned before this is the form from format that is day month and year so basically we are going to convert the day month and year format into utc format so that is why i have mentioned from format as day month and year let me just click on save and send test request okay so our utc format for the due date or the end date is ready so basically now we are ready to sync all our details to create an event in google calendar so let me just uh, click on connect once again and let me just click on save so this will ensure that the data that we have recently created comes in this window also so out of uh, so as you can see we have this field that is calendar and when we click here we will find all the fields that is present in my google calendar basically these are all the calendars that is present in my google calendar now i'm interested in one particular calendar let's say how about this one blue book i'm selecting this one okay so the calendar that i'm interested in is blue book so what i'm going to do here is i'm just going to uh, click the event click the calendar as blue book here also okay now let's start mapping so this is how you map the title okay the title is by silver and this is the description so this is the description silver is used for electronics the location i'm just going to completely ignore it okay so basically i have just ignored the location but in case if you want you can just enter any location according to your choice now in case of the start date so this is how you enter the start date okay so we are planning to enter the start date but this is kind of wrong okay because i have mentioned we want a particular format and this is how you enter the format this is the one okay start date now similarly we have the data for the end date and this is the end date we have mapped it now coming to the time zone so this is how you map the time zone okay so i'm from asia kolkata that is why i'm mentioning the time zone as asia kolkata now if you are from different time zone you can click here and check out your time zone and just type or paste that time zone here now in case of visibility i'm keeping it as public now in case of guest what i'm going to do here is i'm just going to copy this okay basically we want to enter the assignee so this is how you do it paste this code okay and let me just uh, remove this and inside this we are going to map the assignee that is bill gates 89 at the rate gmail.com now in case of the event recurrence rule 
now we just want to make sure that this event only happen once okay once in a year so this event happens once in a year so we have practically used this code okay and we have mapped it okay so basically we are ready to create an event in google calendar all we have to do is just click on save and send test request okay so i think we have a very positive api response so let me just take you to google calendar first of all let's check when is the start date as well as the due date that is from the 16th of may to 29th of may so so let's have a look do we have uh, 16th of may 16th of may so 16th of may yeah 16th of may and uh, the due date was 29th of may okay so let's explore on 15th of may do we have the date nope nope we don't have the event so let's explore on 30th nope we don't have the event so on 17th yes 19th yes 21 yes so basically from 16 to 19 we will have the event that is by silver excellent so the presence of uh, this uh, event in google calendar shows that we have successfully integrated google sheets and google calendar with help of public connect now before you leave let me just explain you the whole mechanism in a nutshell so here i'm going to minimize this action window going to minimize this action window going to minimize this action window and i'm going to minimize the trigger window so basically this is the whole process in a nutshell first you integrated google sheets to public connect and then you have introduced the date time formatter the reason of introducing date time formatter is we have to convert the start date into the utc format similarly we have used another date time formatter to convert the due date into utc format now we have the action event that is integration of google calendar to public connect so to create an event so now there's a perfect flow of data between Google Sheets and Google Calendar. Excellent.